So today we're going to explore glue basting for lining up scenes perfectly when making a patchwork block. That's right, and we're going to make this block. This is one of those blocks that look tricky, but it's actually quite easy once you know how. So if you're having trouble lining up your seams, stick around, this video could be for you. Welcome back to Pattonful TV. I'm Monica, and if you're new here, this is my daughter, Laura, and we make videos about how we make quilt to go quilts. Yes, and this is part seven of our Island Home series where we're making a quilt to go sampler using seven methods of quilt to go. That's right. Yes, but if you're just tuning in right now, stick around because the videos aren't in order, they're free on YouTube and jam packed with lots of tips and techniques for quilting and quilt as you go. That's right. And if you would like to make the quilt, the course notes are available to purchase from our website. Yep, so let's do it. Let's get let's started. started. These are the pieces that you'll need to make the block. The cutting instructions are in the course notes. So to get started, take the two inch background squares and position them onto your work surface with the wrong side facing up. Mark a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of each of those two inch squares. Now take four of your patterned rectangles and place them on your cutting mat with the right side facing up and then take another four of the patterned rectangles, so the ones that are in a different fabric, place them next to your first ones just in the same way. Take a background square and you're going to place that right sides together with a top and bottom edge of our yellow pattern rectangles first of all. So when we do this, we want to make sure that the diagonal lines are going in the same direction on each of the yellow pieces. Now go ahead and take the remaining two inch squares and place them onto the other pattern background rectangles and place them at the top and at the bottom. And just make sure that the diagonal line is going in the opposite direction. So now we're going to start glue basting. I'm just using a Soline glue pen. I've heard people also use Roxanne's glue based. And if you want to use a craft glue, just make sure that it's washable, non-toxic and acid free, but test it first. Now, just to get started, I'm just going to put a swipe of glue into every corner of my squares and then I'll iron it just to make sure that it sets a little bit faster or dries a bit faster and then I'll be ready to start sewing. So I'm just putting the dab of glue in the outside corner. So that's the corner that's going to get cut off. So it might seem a little bit weird, but it um, actually is going to really help us sew these squares on accurately. So set your machine up for piecing in the usual way. So I have my neutral colored thread on a size 70 needle and a straight stitch with a length of two. So we're going to stitch on the marked line, but my tip is we're actually going to stitch slightly outside the marked line and I'll explain why soon. And what I do is so that I can see the line where I'm going to stitch slightly outside of, I'll actually use my open toe foot. So you can try using a foot that works for you, but I will be using my open toe foot and we're going to chain all of those pieces together. We'll sew one side and then we'll cut the thread and turn around and come back the other side. And I also like to start with my a little scrap of fabric that I call the leader. So I'll sew on the leader and then straight on to my patchwork piece.
So do the same thing to group B. So I think that the glue basting made that a lot easier. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I really feel that that's going to improve the accuracy of this block. Now the next thing we're going to do is fold those corners of the square over to the outside edge and press. We are going to trim away the excess, but I like to make sure that everything's okay before I do any trimming. And stitching slightly outside the marked line, I feel that it just gives that little bit of extra fabric so that your square can easily fold over on that diagonal line and meet the corner of the rectangle. That way you know it's nice and accurate. So give that a press. And then once you've done that, take a fabric A and a fabric B rectangle and put them together. And you know that everything's correct if they form an arrow arrow shape. So either a chevron or an arrow, it doesn't matter, it can face up or it can face down, but just so long as when they're together, they do form an arrow shape. So if everything's okay, you can now cut away the excess of the corner, cutting a quarter inch outside the stitching line. So you can save all these scraps now for crumb quilting. Now give those pieces another press just before we move on to the next step. So now to make the star points, take a rectangle A and a rectangle B and place one of the skinny strips in between. So line all of your pieces up like that to make four units for the star points. So now I'm going to sew the long skinny rectangle onto all of the rectangle A's to begin with and I'm going to glue baste them together. So you could pin but we're glue basting in this video and we're just going to see how it goes. So the most important thing is to make sure that your glue stays within the quarter inch seam allowance and um, that's quite important as you know we don't want to end up with glue where we don't want it on the fabric or we don't want to get that on the iron because I will use the iron again to set it. So let's get going with that. So I've changed my foot. I now have my quarter inch foot on with a guide and I've set up with my scant quarter inch seam allowance. So that's where the seam is slightly less, just about the width of a thread less than your regular quarter inch seam allowance. And we do that just to allow for the extra fold over of the fabric in the seam and it just means that our pieces are all going to end up the right size. So I have a video all about accurate piecing so you can check that out. And if you want to know more and how to set your machine up to do a scant quarter inch seam allowance you can also check out our blog post and we will have a link in the description. So I'm now just going to chain from one piece onto the next starting with my leader and ending with an endo. Now press the seam towards the darkest fabric and don't forget to set the seam before you press the seam. All right, let's do the other side in the same way.
Now so the center section of the block, it's basically just a pattern square and it's bordered with some of the background fabric. So now for the fun part, lay out the pieces to form the block. So separate your pieces into rows and join the rows together. I'm going to keep glue basting, no pins. I've never glue basted a whole block and I'm going to let you know what I think about it at the end of the video. So I press the seams from each row in opposite direction so that they alternate from row to row and I chose to press the seams in the middle row in towards the center square because if I press them out it was just too bulky there with all the seams um, that make the points. So now I'm going to continue sewing those rows together and I'm going to once again glue baste and my seams are going to nest or link in nicely because they are pressed in opposite directions. Not bad, happy with that. And do the same to the other side.
Okay, so not bad, but I do have one seam that doesn't line up, even though I glue basted. So we did have a question in the Facebook group, how would you fix something like that? So what I would do is when I look at this section here, I can see that everything's lining up and my seams, it's lining up on the outside edge and it's just a little section there. So what I'll do is I'll just unpick back about an inch and a half or say three or four centimeters on either side of the seams that aren't lining up. And then I'll just realign them. I'm going to go back to using the glue basting again and re-sew it. It's as easy as that. So I'm just going to use a pin just to double check and make sure that my stitching lines are lined up. So that's correct. And now I'm right to sew. So just to make sure that my seams were aligned, I just used a pin and I just pushed it through the stitching line on the top and made sure that it was coming out on the stitching line on the back. And it did, so I know that my seams are now hopefully going to align. And when I start sewing, I'm not going to reverse stitch, I'll just overlap some of the stitching, probably by about um, half an inch or three quarters of an inch. So just restitching and hopefully, fingers crossed, that's all okay. Okay, so I'm happy with my realignment and now I'm just going to press the seams and I'm pressing both seams in towards the center. Okay, so your finished block should now be 12 and a half inches square and we're now going to sew on our outer borders with our corner squares. So if your block is a little bit smaller than 12 and a half inches, you'll need to trim each of your border strips so that they are the same size as the block. And then all you have to do is sew on your side borders, sew your outer squares onto your top and bottom borders and then sew on the top and bottom borders and our block is complete. So the next step is to quilt your block. So layer it together with the batting and backing. Your batting and backing is about a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around the edge. So you can just hold that together with just a couple of safety pins. And then to quilt the block, first of all, stitch in the ditch of all of the seams and except for the outside seam at this point in time. And all I've done here, it looks a little bit complicated, but I've just started by doing an outline around the edge of that center square. So that's just a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then I've done this quilting here, which is sort of quilting the star, what it looks like in the middle. And so that's just a quarter of an inch actually away from the edge of these seams. And then from there, I have just echo quilted the outside edge of the star. All of these instructions are in the course notes, so step-by-step -step instructions, so you won't be able to go wrong. But you can also come up with your own quilting if you want to, because you can actually quilt all the way to the edge of this block. Now, all I need to do is fill in these corners and the outside edge. And as I said, you can quilt all the way to the edge. I just gotta work out what I'm going to do. So you'll get to see the finished block or the finished quilted block on the pattern cover and you'll see it on our socials. I'm not sure what to do. There's just so many options with quilting this block here. So what's the verdict on glue basting? 
Well, it's really good um, and it kind of gets a little bit addictive and it's like you don't want to sew any seam without gluing it first. So it is a lot more time consuming and sometimes you're gluing seams that you don't even need to glue. But, um, but it's good. Give it a go. Like it's all about working out what works for you. It looked like it made the fabric a little bit stiffer as well, helping it, it to be easier to sew. Yeah. yeah so I, I think the sew line glue, the one that I used, it did tend to stiffen up the seam. So mm. yeah. It just stabilizes it a little bit more. Oh, yeah. So the verdict is in glue basting is good. You're a fan. I'm a fan. She's yeah, a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Yep, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. So I can't believe that we are already at part seven. So part six was these two applique blocks here. And there isn't a video for these because these are just made using the same techniques that we did in our applique video. And so what we did was we decided to do a top tips video instead. So all the tips that we have given throughout the course, you'll get to see these in our top tips video. So keep an eye out for that. And part seven is this star here. So we haven't given you a lot of work to do this week because in part eight, we're going to be doing two applique blocks that are going to fit in up the top here. And then we're going to join the whole top section of the quilt together. So that's really exciting and we can't wait to get this part of the quilt joined together and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.